Good evening, BookTube. This is Johnny. <clears throat> I thought I would do a tag that Steve Part Parkridge had on his channel. He was watching uh, my video where I mentioned uh, it, taking pleasure in reading. <laughs> and I got it from this book. I mentioned this book in my last video, The Merry Heart, Reflections on Reading, Writing, and the World of Books by Robertson Davies. And I was looking for that this evening where I could find that, that little thing here. I'll just read this paragraph from this essay called Reading. You then read your book somewhat more slowly than modern educationists recommend. Remember, you are trying to find out what the book has to say. You are not straining to reach the end in order that you may read something else. If you don't like the book, you do not, you do not have to read it. Put it aside and read something you do like, because there is no reason at all why you should read what bores you during your serious reading time, you have to read enough boring stuff in the ordinary way of life without extending the borders of in, in, in you. But if you do like the book, if it engages you seriously, do not rush at it. Read it at a pace at which you pronounce and hear every word in your own head. Read eloquently. I know this is a heresy. People who teach reading are dead against what they call verbalizing. If you verbalize what you, you if you verbal, verbalize, you lose time. What time are they talking about? Time is one of the great hobgoblins of our day. There is really no time except the single fleeting moment that slips by like water and to talk about losing time where saving time is often a very dubious argument. When you are reading, you cannot save time, but you can diminish your pleasure by trying to do so. What are you doing to do with this time when you have saved it? Have you anything to do more important than reading? You are reading for pleasure. You see, pleasure is very important. Incidentally, your reading may bring you information or enlightenment but unless it brings pleasure first, you should think carefully about why you are doing it. See, and that really struck me. You are reading for pleasure, you see, and ple pleasure is very important. Incidentally, your reading may bring you information or enlightenment, but unless it brings pleasure, you should think carefully about what you are, why you are doing it. And I think that's why people get into reading. I, I often think about that. Why, what, what propels people to read? And it is a certain pleasure that you derive. There's a certain kind of an experience you have in the act of reading a book. It could be an adventure story. It could be a fantasy. It could be a, a work of literary fiction, or it could be a book on you know, systematic theology. It could be a book on anything, but as you're reading it, you you have this certain sensation, this certain kind of experience of pleasure, and and that's why it's kind of like you have that kind of experience, that kind of, and then you 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 want to uh, continue having those kinds of experiences, and, and so you're always looking for that book. And that's why I think people in booktube world say, oh, that, you know, they have their rating system or certain books, they just stop reading them because it doesn't bring them any pleasure. Uh, anyway, I was going to do the pleasure. Uh, Steve Partridge had this, this tag, the pleasure book tag. He says here, this tag uses a few of life's pleasures as prompts to suggesting books, poems, novels, nonfiction, etc. He says, enjoy. Prompts. Think about, think. That's the first prompt. Think. I suppose that's one of life's pleasures is thinking. 
but for me it is a book that made you think hard. Now I was, you know, that was really one of the things I really thought about and thought about because I read, I read a lot of hard books, uh, and to me life is hard, <laughs> and I most of the books that I read, some people would describe them as difficult and hard reading unless you have a lot of uh, academic background. You've gone to Bible college and seminary or whatever. But then I thought, well, I would take it on a more general level. And I was thinking, what came to me was a novel. It was a novel that I read a couple of years ago, The Magic Mountain by Thomas Mann. There, this is this is a very slow read, which Robinson Davis says is good. Uh, but there are with within this novel there are discussions on philosophy, the meaning of life, love, death, uh, all kinds of philosophical kind of kind of questions, uh, and. I remember reading it and made me think. <laughs> so that came to my mind. Thomas Mann, The Magic Mountain. Love, a book that broke or mended your heart. Well, I don't know if I ever, if I could really say any book broke my heart or mended my heart. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything, but I have read over the years books that I found to be tragic and a book that came to my mind that I have uh, several books by the American writer Jack Kerouac in my main study and one that comes to my mind is is Jack Kerouac's book Big Sur. Now those who are not acquainted with the writings of Jack Kerouac they're very autobiographical. He might use different names, different places, but the general background is is his friends, poets, and writers, and artists. And but this Big Sur, it says here in the back, Big Sur is a humane, precise account of the extraordinary ravages of alcohol delirium tremens on Kerouac. A superior novelist who had strength to complete his poetic narrative, a task few scribes so afflicted ever accomplished. Others crack up. Here we meet San Francisco's poets and recognize the hero Dean Morality ten years after On the Road. Jack Kerouac was a writer, as his great peer W.S. Burroughs says, and here at the peak of his suffering, humorous genius, he wrote through his misery to the end with C, a brilliant poem apprehended, uh, appended it on the, hallucin the hallucinatory sounds of the Pacific Ocean at Big Sur. So what you have here is description of of the main character, which is really Jack Kerouac, going through alcohol, the ravages of alcohol delirium trimmings. It's just very sad, especially to me it's a very sad and tragic story because uh, you've, I've read a lot of biographies on the life of Jack Kerouac from his youth up until when he died. He died he hemorrhaged in the bathroom from alcohol. He basically bled to death on the kitchen on the bathroom floor when he was like in his late forties, maybe middle forties. But you see, you see this great artist, great writer when he's young, and then you see over the years how alcohol destroys him. And you, this is kind of like a, a document to that self-destruction. So I thought of that book, 
Big Sur by Jack Kerouac. Three, eat a book that nourishes you. Well, this is a book that's no surprise is the collected works of St. John of the Cross. I read this, like I say, all the time, well, mostly throughout the year. I, I tr Sometimes I'll just read it from cover to cover. Sometimes I'll read The Ascent of Mount Carmel, or I'll read The Spiritual Canticle, or The Dark Night, or The Living Flame of Love. I often read this, the collected works of St. John of the Cross. Laugh, four, laugh, a book that brought a little comic relief. Well, I don't know if a, a comic relief, but a book I recently read that I found to be comical or made me kind of chuckle and smile. And is this book here, I just, I got a couple more pages left, but I've really enjoyed this. It's, there's, there's comedy in it. It's called... Dark Man's a novel by Nicola Barker. I've talked about this in several videos. But I would mention Dark Man's. Uh, also then here, Sex, Five, Sex, a book that explores or contains sexuality that doesn't make you cringe. I don't know if I've ever cringed. I've read over the years and I'm 65 years old. I've had three children. <laughs> I've had a lot of sex in my life and I've read a lot about sex over all my years of and the Bible is full of sex <laughs> and uh, sex is just part of life. But uh, one book that came to my mind well first of all there's a couple books <laughs> book that came to my mind, but then I, I was looking at it, I got it out, it's called The Royal Family, a novel by William T. Voldman. Now this book is a lot of sex in it, and it might cause some people to cringe, <laughs> so I don't know, but it says here, uh, it's a very it's a, I, you have to look this book up. I'm not going to read the back of it, but I, if you're curious, look up the Roy, I, This is the first Volbin book I read many years ago, and after I, after I read it, I have now every book that Volbin. I mean, maybe there's two I haven't bought, but I buy every book by Robert. Excuse me, William T. Volbin. And this is one of the first ones I read, and I I re read re, I reread parts of it. But I was thinking of this, and then I was thinking I have these. I was thinking once again. I was thinking of Henry Miller, and I have these in my study. What this this is an anthology, and what this is is called the Olympia Reader, edited by Maurice. Uh, Guardius, and this was published in uh, in Paris back in the uh, oh oh I can't remember what uh, the night in the fifties. Anyway, in this anthology are stories written by, and they deal with sex. But you have uh, in here like uh, Henry Miller, uh, Lawrence Durrell, Samuel Beckett, Henry Miller, Jean Jeanette, Frank Harris. You have Henry Miller again, uh, uh, Beersley, uh, William Burroughs. Uh, uh, Gregory Curso, who was a beat poet, and some others. And these are just, what they would do, they would write these stories because they needed some money because they were starving. And so they'd, they'd write these trashy kind of stories and sell them to this guy 
so they have some money to go to the cafe and to buy food or drugs or drugs. So you have, uh, I have two copies of it. I have this big copy and this little paperback. I think the same stories are in this one. I think it's the same thing. Uh, there's a couple more in here. There are not in the other ones. Uh, but yeah, I was thinking of that as far as sex. The Royal Family by William T. Voldman and the Olympia Reader Selections from the Travis Companion Series edited by Maurice Guardius. I see this often at used book sales. This, this is two editions of that as far as sex. Six. Rest, a book that gave you peace. Well, <laughs> I just put the Bible. Seven, experience, a book that introduced you to a new subject or shifted your perspective. Well, I've had a lot of books over my years change my perspective. I've gone through many different changes of perspective on things as I've grown over the years. But one book I just thought I'd mention, change my perspective, was uh, this book. The, D the Domestication of Transcendence, How Modern Thinking About God Went Wrong. Uh, it says here, William Platcher, this is by William C. Platcher, looks at classical Christian theology, Thomas Aquinas, John Calvin, Martin Luther, and contrast it with Christian discourse about God that evolved in the 17th century. In particular, it deals with the notion of transcendence that gained prominence in this era and its impact on modern theology and modern thinking today. He persuasively argues that useful lessons can be drawn from pre-modern thinking about God, especially when viewed within the context of contemporary objections to it. This re-examination, according to Platcher, has practical and profound implications for modern theology. So yeah, what you have to do is, how did, before Calvin, before Thomas Aquinas, before Martin Luther, how did Christians think about God? There was a change at the in the time of the 17th century, the rise of scholasticism. So this is very... Uh, might call this the taming of transcendence, how you domesticate God. And uh, I read it. I read it almost ten years ago. But it, it at the time I read it, it really shifted my thinking about God and about systematic theology, the doctrine of God. So yeah, that's what came to my mind. So that's all the questions I have here. So I just thought I mentioned these books. The, D the Domestication of Transcendence, How Modern Thinking About God Went Wrong, The Olympia Reader, uh, Royal Family, a novel by William T. Voldman, uh, Dark Man by Nicola Barker, St. John of the Cross, his collected works, Big Sur by Jack Kerouac, and The Magic Mountain by Thomas Mann. Now, if you read all these books, <laughs> it'd, keep you, it'd keep you going for a while. Another book that... Uh, I, oh, I, I did get a book in the mail today, and I found out I had it in my library already. But this is this came out that got this in the mail today. It's called Berlin Alexander Pletz by Alfred Dobin, translated from the German by Michael Hoffman. This is a new release by the New York Review Classics. Uh, so yeah, uh, the Berlin Alexander plots the great novel of Berlin and the doomed 
the Renmar, Renmar Republic is one of the great books of the 20th century. Gruesome far, farce, farce, a farcical and appalling word drunk pitch dark. <laughs> I had I got this in the mail and then I, I when I was cataloging it in my library thing, I had this copy of it. That I see if I see any book, if I go to a book sale, a, a thrift store, or if I see a book that's about Berlin the 1920s, fiction, non-fiction, whatever, I buy it. And that's probably why I bought this. I have all kinds of books on Vienna, Austria in the 20s, Berlin in the 20s, Paris in the 20s, London in the 20s, the, the rise of the beginning of modernism, that's why. So, another book that I was reading last night that I, that this is going for another direction in this video. When I originally was talking about pleasure and reading, I was thinking about books that give you kind of a pleasure as you read it. The, it's like poetry or something very poetic. The way it's, it's written kind of brings you pleasure. And I was thinking of this book, uh, Teresa by Jack Kerouac. And I was going to read it, parts of it, but this video has gotten too long. But I will, in my next video, I'll probably read. I want to do... What I like to do is is read different books. I'm terrible at reading. You can tell I cannot pronunciate. Uh, but there are so many books that I have read over the years that I... It's like uh, Robertson Davis talks about verbalizing them. Reading them out loud or reading them in your mind. And there are so many of those I've read over the years and I thought about sharing those in a video. But... I was thinking about this one. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll make an attempt to read this. Uh, what it's about... Uh, it's a story about when Jack Kerouac was living in Mexico City and he was really down and out. He was strung out on drugs and he was living in absolute squalor and he was shooting up heroin and all kinds of drugs and he was living with this very uh, Mexican prostitute named Teresa and he describes it this whole way of life this and it's a very thin but it's very dark and but in a certain way it's it's very beautiful the way it's written in its darkness if that can be said there's a certain poetic beauty of darkness and when he writes this little thing but some other time so anyway steve this is steve's partridge first tag the pleasure book tag i tag anybody out there who's interested i'll post this at the bottom of my video so i hope you're having a good night here it's march the 6th it's a tuesday it's 8 27 at night here in west michigan uh, tomorrow night, my wife comes home at midnight. Hopefully, we'll all be together again in the little hermit hut. So, I'll sign off until next time. Bye. Oh, I wanted to show Steve the dog. It's still, this is the guard. This I keep this dog downstairs, the ceramic. This dog was in the house when we moved in about 28 years ago. This house was filled, it used to be an old lady lived in this house. And there were ceramics and plastic flowers everywhere. And this, I found this ceramic bulldog and I've kept it all these years and it guards the library down the lower level. It's the guardian, the guardian of the library, of the, the holy scriptorium. <laughs> and this purse used to belong to my daughter. She she left it, and I've always put it around the dog. So this is the guardian. So anyway, hoping you're having a good night, a good week. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the subscribers. And feel free to do the pleasure tag. Till next time, bye.